Right, we've got another video here. This this gun is a Tranta. It was, um, it's about 160 years old. Um, and I, instead of me doing the video, I thought I would um, have Hillbilly Collector X talk about it. Um, we've talked about him before in it. He's been collecting since he was about 14 years old. And he's roughly around 65 years old now, which is still a young chappy. Yeah, but um, here he's going to talk about this gun. So uh, away you go, Hillbilly. Well, this is a third model Trender. Um, they started making the third model in the late 1850s. And the serial number on this particular revolver puts it at 1860, 1861. Um... You've all seen cowboy movies, and the Americans always had single-action revolvers. They had to cock the hammer each time, and then pull the trigger. The British went about it a different way. Um, they went for the, the double-action revolvers, where you just pull the trigger and that does everything. This is a very early version, and it um, how it works is you can pull... Pull just the bottom trigger and it brings the hammer to full cock and that little trigger in there pops out and if you pull that trigger that sets it off. So if you want to take one shot carefully that's what you do. If, you, if you've got four, maybe four enemy charging you, you put your finger on both triggers and just pull it and the hammer will go up and down every time you pull both triggers. Um, it's got a couple of unusual little features. Uh, this here is a safety. That's a spring. It's normally springing out, but you lift the hammer a little wee bit and put that in. And then that holds the hammer off, off the cylinder. Well, that's very good. That's very good, uh, Mr. Hillbilly. I got your name right this time, instead of calling you by your name. Um, that's a good little point to point out, because I didn't know that. Very good. Yeah, and it's set up so that as soon as you pull the trigger, that pops out. So it's, Oh, very cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's on yeah. a safety, but it's ready to go as soon as you pull those triggers. Um, the other side has got a wee lever. Um, it's all quite clever engineering. That's a little spring-loaded pivot. And if you want to remove the axis pin, you just push that down and the pin comes out. Uh, that's got a... A corresponding notch in the axis pin so that makes it quick and easy to pull apart um, yeah it's a five shot chamber it's a true 44 caliber and to use these you had the hammer backed off so the chamber could turn freely then with a flask you filled each each chamber with your powder and then they use two different types of uh, projectiles is a conical bullet which is this one and a round ball you had a choice most of the molds that came with them had each of these bullets in, in one mold so you've got your powder in then you put your bullet in the chamber uh, go around do all of those and then the, the rammer here get it around the right way yeah, then you use the rammer, and the bullets were slightly oversized, and the rammer pushes them in. So you go around and do each of those. And then the thing a lot of people don't realise is they used to put grease over the front of the chambers, over each chamber. And the reason for that was because if there was any loose powder sitting around the front, um, when you fired it, that could set off that loose powder, and it wasn't uncommon to get a multiple discharge, uh, all chambers going off at once, uh, which really wasn't very good for the gun or the user. Um, yeah. I imagine not. No. Yeah. And then you can't come back, and you put a percussion cap on, these are called nipples, don't giggle, uh, your percussion cap on there. Oh, I like the sound of nipples. Yeah. I had to throw that in. It was just a bit funny. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so this 
how long did it take to um, load, Steve, to load all five chambers? Um, For an experienced uh, person doing it? Yeah, no, well, I've used these, and you'd, you'd probably be 10 minutes. Um, but the a lot of officers who were using this type of revolver in the Crimea, the, it's the right period for the um, Crimean War, a lot of them carried spare loaded chambers, spare loaded cylinders. So, I mean, rather than reload this laboriously, you'd just drop this one out and put another loaded one in. So only the officers would have used this, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah so my great-grandfather would have never carried one of these, would he? Because he was just a Joe Bloggs fellow that used to just run around, but he ended up getting shot in the head. He would never had this, this tranter on him, would he? No. Right. No. A lot of settlers bought them, just private purchase. Um, this is certainly Land Wars period, 1860s. Um, a lot of farmers or people living out in the outback would have bought these for self-protection. Um, it's got some quite nice original engraving on. Um, floral engraving, typical of the period. Um, got a little Trenta mark up there, yeah, Steve. Trenta's patent. That was oh, Trenton's a, patent. Trenta's patent rammer. Yeah, and the serial numbers on the other side, isn't it, Steve? Serial, and that, that, and serial that's, numbers there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steve. Oh, Steve is not very good on um, on. Uh, oh, sorry, Hillbilly Hillbilly X is not very good on um, googling or doing computers. So, um, but um, yeah, I've let it slip a few times with his name, but um, it doesn't matter. But um, right there, I can't really go in it that clear, but I think I got it now. There's a little serial number. Um, I got a woman to Google this because I'm not very good at it as well, and I I I, I really haven't got the time. I've got to uh, sell these things or move them on. So um, I got a couple of people to um, Google them for me, and um, they found out the date of when it was um, well, when it was made. So um, it was good because when he come over, he had no idea when it was made. Carry on, Steve. A wee bit of engraving. <laughs> Yes, Shane. A wee bit of engraving on the butt cap there. Um, yeah, and these these were officially called self-cocking revolvers in the day. Um, as I said, the Americans had single actions. They had to cock the hammer each time to fire. Um, this is called a self-cocking. The English went, there's no spur because you, you don't cock it with your thumb. Uh, that lever there cocks it. Yep, and that trigger there fires it. You're quite passionate about these these guns, um, Hillbilly X. I got it right that time. Uh, yes, Shane. <laughs> um, these are one of my favourite revolvers from the period. Um, the Adams were very popular in the Colt navies. Both the Adams and the Colt navies were used extensively by English officers. Um, and they were all here in the 1860s and um, we've got to talk about the yeah. land wars come on we have to talk about that because this is what this is all about This is, these were used in the land wars the, weren't the, they um, hillbilly X? yes Shane they, <laughs> they definitely were yeah. um, the tra <laughs> the, the tranter wasn't on common issue to British officers probably because it was more expensive than the Adams or the Colt navies but uh, these are certainly period for the land wars, and there would have been a lot of them here. This one's probably been here since it was brand new, uh, used here, and um, definitely a used a gun in your in your opinion. Oh, definitely, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, yeah, hundred yeah, percent, yeah. 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 I mean, you wouldn't have been around in the eighteen sixties and not used one of these at some stage. Yeah, and it's got it's got the wear and tear on it that sort of. Been there, done that look again. Once, once I, I keep bringing up that all the time, but um, it's got that look to it. But it's in it's in quite good order. Um, you want to talk about the condition and any more closing bits you want to finish about the gun? Yeah. Um, it's a nice, clean, tidy example. It hasn't got it's got a wee bit of original finish on the rammer uh, down in the sheltered spots because when it gets handled. It, it doesn't get touched down and down and there. It's you know protected by the screw and uh, this ramming plug. Um, the engraving's quite sh sharp and visible. Hmm. It's got basically a grey patina with uh, no blue aside from the bit we noted on there. 
Yeah. But it hasn't got any bullets, obviously, because they're down by his foot and he dropped them. Yeah. So um, we never really loaded it or anything. We're not um, getting into any of that sort of stuff because these, these are only uh, display guns. They're not to be fired or ever be used. These guns are over a hundred and... Um, over 150 years old and anything that sort of um this sort of mechanism or flintlock or anything is 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 what it is and they've just got to be treated as a display gun and display gun only well this one uh it's been been well used but it's been really well looked after uh none of the checkering's really quite respectable on the grip still um and it's actually got an unusually good bore for a black powder gun of this age. It is in full working order. Um, but yeah, just a nice, clean, tidy example of an 1861 gun, that, uh, the type of gun that was used in the Crimean War, the land wars here, and wherever else the English went. Yep. Um, so yeah. yeah. That's about it on that gun. Well, I can't think of any other salient points about it. Um, well, that's a well used word. I've never used um, salient. Is it salient? Is that how you say it? But anyway, that's what that's what it is. And um, any more points? No, no ball points? Um, no, no. Yeah. I think that's me done. But, it, oh, but he's waffled for 11 and a half minutes on this gun, and obviously he's a bit passionate about it, this uh, hillbilly, hillbilly X, and we keep getting that right. We're not calling him by... Um, Steve or anything but I think I've let it slip a couple of times but um, it is what it is and he's passionate about these guns and, and he must enjoy talking about them thank you very much Hillbilly X thank you Shane